Harriet Way is a 52 mile circular route through some of the most beautiful scenery the UK has to offer. Join me as I navigate the rolling hills, rivers, towns and valleys of the quaint and spectacular Yorkshire Dales. Hey! Ah, we're back! We're back! I am doing the Harriet Way. I've just set off. I've left my car in uh, Aysgarth Waterfall National Trust Car Park. It was £17.50 for a week. So I've just left it there and I'm going to do a big loop back to the car. It's a bit built up here so we'll get out of town and then I'll catch up with you. But stay tuned. We're gonna, it's going to be about a four, maybe a four day hike but we'll see. Just been for a little mooch and a look at Aysgarth Falls down there. And the name Aysgarth comes from an old Norse saying, the open space in the oak trees, a stunning waterfall. I'm setting off a bit later than, than I would have hoped. It's about 20 past 12 now, but we've got a lot more daylight now, this time of year, so I'm not too fussed. I can still put a good shift in, and I can, when I get up, I can do full on like 10 hour days, which is a joy. And so normally it takes about four or five days to complete this hike. I'm aiming to do it in sort of three or four days. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing it. It's gonna take me some places I've never been. And I'm looking forward to showing you and showcasing the Yorkshire Dales. I gotta get my uh, hiking legs back under me. My bag's so much lighter than when I did the tour of the lake district in winter i'll go through what i've got in my bag i might have done a, a what's in my bag video for this for this trip but if not i'll let you see what i've got but i've gone super lightweight because it's not going to get too cold i've made a few changes i'm still in same clobber still in ultras i've just brought me three season bag but i'm hoping that'll be enough and i've got my mat to go under me uh, but I don't have the Xtherm either. I've got a lighter version, which is hasn't got as a good, it hasn't got as good an R value. But with me little yoga mat thing underneath it, that should keep me right. But we're back, baby, back on the trail, and I am excited for it. Right, I've got to keep looking at my map. I've uh, I've punched everything into my OS map because there isn't a Harvey map for this route or a Cicero guidebook. So I've just got a really basic guidebook and I've punched it into the OS map myself, so I have to just keep checking on that because it's not very well signposted, this one. Spring is in the air. I'm just going to do a couple of miles then run back. Oh, the optimism. I'll never learn, I'll never learn. Optimistic, mate. <laughs> Full of the joys of it all. So I will be doing little walk past the camera i'm looking forward to gates out here i don't know what i don't know what it's got to offer but i want i want my yorkshire to really pull out the stops when it comes to these gates i've got high expectations Ready? Oh, that's a fucking strong spring that look Woo. Have your arm off. This is classic Dale's behaviour, this. Just these little spring-loaded gates. With a little with a little way through the stone wall, the dry stone wall. I mean get used to dry stone walls, mate, because we're in the Dales. And it's straight over. To another one. Huh. It's so good to be back out. I've not acclimatised to the hike yet because I've only just set off, so I'm still a bit giddy, still a bit excited. <laughs> and my mind hasn't just. I, it takes a good few miles, maybe even a day for me anyway, just to 
become part of the trail and really get into it but it's good to be back out hiking and getting some miles under me under me boots my last few videos have been in the garden because i've not been able to get out and about i've been down south at ferns and we've uh, we've been through it we've been uh, she's taken on her auntie's dog who was pregnant and we had to well basically we were up all night helping her give birth uh, to nine puppies there we go it's a bit dark it's a bit dark look at all these little gadgets Oh, his mum, look. Come on. Wiggly one pups, wiggly one pups. Look at that good She's having a break from kids. And there we are, nine. You can have a little look at them, but there's nine puppies there. And we're going to look after them. Our fern's looking after them at the moment while I'm out on the hike. And then we're giving them back to her auntie for eight weeks. And then we're going to choose one one of the puppies they're labradoodles and we're going to choose one yoink and that'll be our our puppy together so it'll be coming hopefully it can keep up with me on these hikes and i'll bring it along i'll get it trained up so it doesn't attack sheep and so that it appreciates latches and locks so if you've got any cool names for a, a puppy we were thinking twig her other dog's called timber so timber and twig or if you've got any other cool names that you, you might want to suggest, pop them down below. Too hot. I'm too hot already. I brought a windbreaker with me. Something super lightweight, which will keep me cool and stop the wind chill. But that down jacket can wait, man, for an evening. That's better. That's better. I'll leave a full list of everything that I'm using on this trip below so you can get an idea of what's going on. I'm going pretty light at the moment. My total pack weight is this and that's without water, gas and food. I've got two bottles of water, one on either side. I've got a small gas. I've got three. I've got two main meals and a, like a muesli, a muesli. There's going to be places to, to stock up on food as you go and they do get a bit tiresome them uh, camping meals so I just bought a couple just in case and just so that I know the first couple of nights I've got something to eat and then I'll stock up at village shops or get a, a meal as and when I can there we go look here <sighs> I don't mind being in a calorie deficit on this one I know you need the energy and all that but I'm uh, I'm happy to be in a calorie deficit I've done it before on the uh, the um, what did I do it on Oh, the South Downs way, I did it on that one, just... is when I get a little bit of extra round midriff and on teats, I know that I can afford... My body can eat the fact that it's already got... I've got it in in his surplus on boobs and that. <laughs> it's forecast to be like this for the next couple of days. And then it's forecast to piss it down. So I'll probably get everything. Hopefully we'll get everything. I'm into it. I've not gone for waterproof boots, as always, I've gone for my trail runners. So I'll just accept the fact that my feet are going to get wet at some point. Try and keep them dry as long as possible. It couldn't be more Yorkshire Dales, unless like a sheep came out of there with uh, eating, uh, eating gravy out of a Yorkshire pudding or something. Just... So I've studied the maps a little bit, but not a lot at all. So I've got no idea even roughly where I'm going to end up, because I don't know how many miles I've got in me, because I don't know what the terrain is. But I maybe because I set off at 20 past 12 or 12 because I set off at 12 o'clock today I'm probably just going to get about 10 miles. Ah, this is boring. Look at these. I'm just gone through a double figures. I've got, I got I'm into double figures in them already. We're heading that way. Up onto the tops. keep getting big gusts of wind and I I had my delta pegs in my hand thinking shall I take them just in case I'm up tops 
and wind comes in I didn't so I'm just gonna have to rely on on my uh, normal tent pegs and hope the wind doesn't get up it's about this for a couple of k now probably some of my favorite hiking it's just short grass nice and soft underfoot following this stretch of river all is good had some heavy rain recently and this is where the river which is beyond them trees has burst its banks and come all the way up here look at this set up Little bridge, little gate. There's so many of them uh, little thin bridges and little thin gates. If you were a unit, you'd struggle on this one. So if you are a unit, you might want to reconsider. Look at this odd beast. Ain't that nice? Oh. I mean, she's past her best, but I reckon in her prime that would have been absolutely stunning. Lovely stuff. In 1978, the North Eastern Railway Company completed the construction of the railway line between Laban and Garsdale Head providing a rail service to Wensleydale, effectively connecting the Settle Carlisle line to North Allerton. This service ran passenger trains until 1954 and goods trains for a few years after, eventually closing completely in 1959. All that remains are a couple of bridges and a raised rail bed, now used only by farmers and sheep, and me. All the wild edibles are coming out, all the greens, everything's springing into life. I've seen loads of stuff I can munch on. I am going to stop and I'm going to... I mean, I'll show you a few bits and pieces, but there is something in particular that I want because uh, I want to make a cup of tea and I want to use this particular thing to make a cup of tea. And no, it's not magic mushrooms before you ask. Before the next shot is of me baptising myself in there naked. Giving it what for in third dimension. Medic! What the fuck? Do you see that? Take camera on to film the gate. A bit of deadfall just landed on it. Ah, uh, let's go this way. Not risking it, mate. Let's go this way. Ah, oh, it's a better gate as well. I got my camera out and I was going to chat about how Yorkshire Dales had let me down with this, whatever it is, held together by rope. And I've come up here and look at this. All new clobber. I mean, it is a classic. Can I do it with foot? Yeah. Oh my God, that is a... That spring's got some beef in it. Here we go. I won't take much, I'll just let go. Oh, thud. Do that again. Let's, let's reload that. Reload. A good old Yorkshire thud. Woo! And a little bit further down, we've got a copy and paste. I like it when I see these. I like to think... <sighs> he's done them at the same time, two foot price of one. Is it as good as his mate? 
actually no look it's bounced we've had a bit of bounce back there and it hasn't it wasn't secure give it another chance no got to shoo it in <laughs> for people like overseas in america and that you might think this is a bit bonkers but it's just a bath in a wall deal with it welcome to yorkshire a little tiny one. Oh mate, look at the wear and tear on them. Whew. Oh, Jesus, packs a punch, feisty little number. Look at that, it's rusty, but it's, it's got a bit of bite to it. <laughs> it dislocated my arm. Well done. Well done, lad. You see, look, it's, it's deteriorating and it's rusty, but Still got some fight in her. Still got some fight in her. Mechanic. It's a really thin stone flagged path. In the middle of the field. The lads. <laughs> I mean, he's really treating us in he there. Considering what it's for, hey, mate, don't be startled. I'm here. Oh, he doesn't care. Chilling. Look at this man. Little gate in the corner there, little one in the corner. It's like a little gate maze, and you get into this paddock, you're like, right, where's the little gate? Oh, there. Tiny little gates everywhere. It's like an old school computer game. Hello. No, mate, you're alright. That wasn't the building site. <laughs> oh, is it a building site? Is it, is it your building site? Are you Mine working and somebody here? else's. <laughs> right, okay. You got your work cut out for your bike looks of it. Oh, uh, yeah, trying to find a leaking bike. Oh, dear me. Well, I found the bike now, at least. How have you, right? Yeah. Have you got flags to it? Just straight up, straight back down again? Well, I'm not even sure where the bike goes yet. I know where it starts and I know where it ends somewhere. So you've got to scratch about, haven't you? Or at least you've got a breaker. Well, exactly. That'll save you a bit of effort, won't it? You've got a good day for walk? Yeah, it's lovely for it, isn't it? Take right, care. good luck, mate. Should have given him an hand digging, shouldn't I? Rut sleeves up. Welcome to Askrig. Have a little look. It's got a nice church. Beautiful. Should we have a quick look at church? Just a quick look, because I think I'm going that way. Don't get squashed. <laughs> Beauty. Oh, they've got a shop. Quite parched. Some other than water. Should we have a look and grab something from the shop? There's your calorie deficit. <laughs> Essential survival food. Many visitors come to Asquick thanks to its fame as a key location when the BBC filmed James Herriot's All Creatures Great and Small, using one of the houses as Skeldale House and you can still see his car parked outside it. 300 years ago, Askrig was the main town in Upper Wensleydale, with the largest market in the area. It was a centre for several textile industries including flax spinning and hand knitting. Lead mining was also important. In 1795, the building of a new turnpike road bypassed the village and from then, Askrig quickly lost its market and prosperity to Hawes. Askrig became famous in most recent times as a location for the filming of All Creatures Great and Small television series. You're welcome. And here's a red fur box, classic. I've goofed, I've got wrong way. But I'm hoping this might be it. Will this bring me onto it? Or am I just asking for trouble? Let's check my. Okay, this for a. It's a thin one. Askrig is derived from the old Norse meaning. The ridge where ash trees grow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's tiny mate, that's two two panels. Still got still got a spring on it, I can't even get through. Ah. <laughs> oh. 
That's the smallest gate in the world, isn't it? Look at that. That's brilliant. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Right, onto these flags. This is an old mill. I think this is where water would have ran through that thing. I believe, I don't know there. Look, won't be. An abundance of wild garlic. You can see the buds are starting to come through. Nice to be pickled. Nice to pickle them. Beautiful. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Not very deep though. Up to another skinny gate. <laughs> so many, there's another one up there. Look at that, all that green throughout these trees is wild garlic. I'm not sure how far the waterfall is and I've got to come back. I've got to double back on my cell and go back up there, but I want to see it. It's my holiday, isn't it? Oh, here it is. It's not even too far. Man, the wild garlic stinks. Yee! Wow. Look at that, man. Look at the size of that. You can't really get an idea of it. I'm probably going to fall over here, that's a fact. It's a bit wet. She's a bit weird. But look at her. <laughs> Artwork, look. It's making me need a piece. Wow. It doesn't do it justice on here of how big that actually is. It's massive. It's beautiful. It's unbelievable. I'm going. Ah! Woo! Nearly. <laughs> I nearly stacked it. Hey! <laughs> that would have been a shitter. Proper shitter. A proper detour, but it's worth it. Look at it. I can't jump that. Of course I can. I'm out there. I made it, there's a duck. It's all going on. Unbelievable, Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff. Shall we see if we can... Oh. Look at that, Jeff. <laughs> oh. Look at the size of it, Jeff. Amazing stuff. Amazing. Jack by the hedge. Garlic mustard. That's good eating. You could knock up a little salad from all this stuff. See this? This is old bridge here. This is what I should have gone over. And my old mate just said I was first person, first hiker to go over that bridge. <laughs> documenting it and there it is look <laughs> there there you go my old mate says that bridge has just opened today and I'm first hiker to go over it so I says what's its name is it don't have one I said well should maybe call it the Hayes oh. medic oh right at last something that's not one of them little ankle biting gates Oh, don't let me down. Oh, it's silent. I thought it was going to be a screecher. I mean, it ain't it, Mark, but come on. You've got to let it off at silence, haven't you? That's where I'm going. Said busk. Isn't really a path, there's a path. I mean, if you can call it a path. This way, anyway, have it field.
glorious day. It's a bit windy, but it's all that glorious. Hey, off, what's this? Oh, here we go. It's our first counterweight of the of the trip. Oh, I can feel pull on it already. It's ideal that. What's going on? Got a counterweight on a squealer. Tight squeeze. Don't really need the counterweight on it, but it works for me. Not oh, lads. Now then. Right, it was going to happen, wasn't it? Our first N cow enter with these lads here. Look, yeah. I don't want to go through middle here because if that's mum and that's dark like kid, you don't want to be going through the middle of them. Go on. <laughs> He's not going to shift. Go on, mate. Because I don't want to get in the middle of you. Why do I even get through? He's vibing me out. Look, he's eyeballing me. Go on. Not shifting. <laughs> oh, come on. I can't. I need to get to that gate. He's right in front of it. Come on, Mush. Come on. Get up. Get up there. Go on. Come on, come on. What we're we gonna do, just wait. Sit it out a bit. Where's the actual gate? It's on that side. I don't look like I can get through there in a hurry. Pin me to it, look. Go on, go with your mate. Go on. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm getting in the middle of them. He just don't care, does he? It's fine. It's absolutely fine, look. Look, what's this? Is that a gate? No, you stood right in front of the gate, Mush. I'm, well, I'm climbing over, I don't care. Look <coughs> at him, stubborn. But that's where the gate was, look. I couldn't have done out. I couldn't have done out, mate. It's not that, it's not that I was scared at all. I'm gonna say something pretty controversial here. And I am aware of my standing and uh, my position in the scene, in the latch and lock scene. But I'm going to say this: I am going. I've been thinking about it. I am going to say it. There's too many gates. There, I've said it. There's too many gates. Like you can't get a good flow. You can't get a good. I'm stopping literally every. There's another one there, another one there, then another one, then another one. It's constant, mate. And don't get me wrong, I love a gate more than more than anyone I know. I love a gate, but it's just one. It's relentless. It's one after other, and I can't. I can't lose myself in my mind and just amble because I'm constantly having to stop and deal with a screecher or a, a whatever gate look what's this one of these oh I like what he's done there though but still I'll get around the corner and there'll be another one sometimes there's two real close together ah is this it is this careful what you wish for Like uh, Augustus Gloop when he like, when he gets in chocolate. That's me now. The CEO of Latch and Lock is getting latched and locked out of his mind. <laughs> what I like is just the odd one now. The odd one that's quite ornate or something different about it, but relentless, relentless farm gates out the one. 
you probably can't hear me because it's it's quite windy that's farmer there I might go and have a word with him whoa Big metal death parrot. Fair dues. Again, another little tiny gate. And who have we got here? <laughs> Look, the lads waiting for me. I can't. I've got to come this way. Way. Let me pull the stone off. Right, lads, I I've got to come this way. So, do you mind moving? You're intimidating me. Get out of it. Lads, please. I can't. Too much, isn't it? Look, come on. Right, if I come down here, you're gonna pin me to the wall and smash my head in a walk. I'll, st I'm not having it. Go on, back off. Come on, lads, get up, you. Come on, come on. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm starting to believe. I'm hurting them. <laughs> look, hurting them. Don't turn around, it's all right. It's all right. Hey! <laughs> the beef master. Thing is with cattle, you just can't, you can't show fear, but it's hard not to be a little bit nervous when they're all just, stu <laughs> just stood there. Oh, Curlew. Quit long beak. You can hear it. There's some wonderful birds kicking about. Gate, 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 Gareth Gate. I don't know if you can see there, but not the crows, that little in there. Swallows, the swallows are back for summer. A great sign. Give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes out of that wind, man. The wind's blowing that way, so I've just got behind this wall. There's my views, look. Beautiful. You sit here and have a... I know they're for kids, but they're good because they've got no shit in them. It, they're just, it's all fruit. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you because that's what it's come to. It's like a little spiral. Like a uh, fruit lever like you would make in the wild. Not that if, well, if you know, you know, but just like a fruit leather. Tasty clobber as well. Peach and banana. Just a good little sugary hit and healthy. I give them to your kids. I used to give them to my daughter and just. <laughs> She'd think they were normal sweets. Unbeknown to her, it's fruit. <laughs> you don't realise that what it is when wind's blasting you, and then you get behind here and it's woo. It's delicious. Consider it time of year. It's five o'clock, so we don't get dark till about eight. Three hours. Three hours of hiking. I don't want to be up tops because it's too windy. I don't want to be in a a certain type of woodland that's going to have a chance of deadfall breaking my face. Ideally, somewhere like this, like in a corner, out the wind, pitch my tent up. We'll see in three hours where I am. Who knows? Who knows where we'll pitch it. Through here. Medic! <laughs> Alright mate. I'm going down here and through this little village and round. This little village is the end of day one because there's an alehouse and a few other bits and pieces. I think a campsite. But I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh, whoa, look at this. Braveheart, Yorkshire's adopted son, got gone but not forgotten. In loving memory of Lawrence Edward Dews, rest in peace. Some work gone into that. Lovely stuff. I should have a little sit on it. Ah, what a view as well. Stunner. 
I don't want to keep in an alehouse or a campsite or anything like that. I want a wild camp, so I'm going to push through this village. And once I get past the other side of the village, if there's anywhere decent, that's when my eyes are starting to look for somewhere to camp. It's been getting very blustery, so I need to bear that in mind when I look for somewhere to pitch my tent. I don't really want to be too high up or, or like I said before, I don't want to be too high up or where there's going to be limbs of trees falling on me. And then like there's a lot of it, like it's all farmland around here. Rolling farmland. If I pitch late and leave early doors, I should be alright. I should be alright tucked up against the wall or something like that. Providing there's not too much cattle about. We'll see, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? I don't know where I'll end up. Green Dragon. He's got Timmy Taylor's, my favourite pine. Uh, <laughs> he's used back door. That's funny. That is funny. Tell him it. Hey. Denied Timmy Taylor's. Oh, look, he's camping as well. I could pick. Hey, up, mate. How are you doing? My new mate, look. Hey, up. He's herding me. Am I getting herded? I've been filming much because the winds, the winds picked up, and there was no more gates slowing me down. So I just got into a zone, and I'm up here now, and I'm looking for somewhere on that side because the wind is coming this way. So a wall, or just a divot, or anything that'll give me a bit of respite from that. And hopefully I'll get a nice sunset. Let's check behind this wall. This is the gas. It's a bit all over it, sure. Is there a better bit? I'm gonna keep following it up. I'm supposed to be going that way, but eventually this wall will lead onto my path. And the risk is I am going higher up, so I'll be more, you know, there's more chance of wind getting me, but there's all these stones under the ground. I'm not gonna get me pegs in, so I'll keep going. I'll go higher. I'll twist, no, I'll twist. This is it. <laughs> this is it. It'll do. It'll ding dang do. It'll have to ding dang do. Is my tent gonna come above there? As long as I'm down here, it's fine. Hey, up. <laughs> you tired, mate? Come here. Come here. <laughs> Can't hack it, can you? Right, let's get a set up. There she is. I've purposefully put the my trekking poles lower than the wall so that wind ain't gonna catch it too much. And it seems it's pretty sturdy. I've gone quite low to the ground because of lowering the the hiking poles. It is touching ground. There's my view. The gossamer gear the one which is the lightest tent i own coming in at so it's super lightweight not as much room as in the lanshan 2 but plenty for me if i'm honest i just fancied a change mate and i fancied giving it a spin because it is a lot lighter than any other tent i've got it's a single wall tent yeah condensation can be a problem but normally i would raise it off the ground so you get more airflow underneath but all this is mesh so we'll see how we get on. I've got my little yoga mat to put under my airbed. And the airbed I've got, I've not I've not gone for my X-Therm. I've gone extra light, and in fact, I've gone for the Uber light. So it comes with loads of different adapters, this thing. I've shown you them, the other incarnations of them before, but this is the new one. It goes in the end instead of on the on the side of it. It goes over all sorts of values. You can use it that way, you could use it that way, and you can use one of the other orange adapters. It works for pretty much all airbeds. All airbeds I've got, anyway. So you pop that over there and then the nozzle goes over this side and the beauty of it is once you're in, you're in. You can just leave it to do its own thing. You can just leave it blowing up your airbed <laughs> and you do what you need to do and it'll, and it'll uh, just keep an eye on it. I put it wrong way. I was actually sucking air out of it. <laughs> I was actually sucking air out of it. Uh, there's an arrow actually that... Uh. There's an arrow there, look, fighting that way. That's blowing. Other way is sucking it out. 
silly sod. Oh, it's because I'm tired, isn't it? I think. There we go. It takes between 30 seconds and a minute to do. Jobs are good, and it's good that it's got a porch here so I can put my bag in porch. I mean, you can get your bag in here, it's quite long. I got this as well for it. Nick Curlew. Because it's a lantern, right? I'll show you it later. It weighs nothing. Crunches down to nothing. I'll show you it dark anyway. But it gives such a lovely light. Only if you want, check it out below. Flextail, give me a discount code. Um, and it, you get 15% off with that code. I think it's Hazy15 or something like that. But I'll pop it there and I'll leave a link below if you want to get yourself a little discount on one of these. Oh, I'm excited to get in wigwam. In fact, I'm not going to get in wigwam actually. It's a lovely day out here, isn't it? I need to be in there just yet. Oh, four oh, balls! I forgot my pillow. Ball! Ball! I forgot my pillow. Uh, why am I such a Kentucky Fried Donut? Sleeping bag of choice for this trip is the Rab Neutrino 600. In you go. Fluff yourself up, lad. Right, I'll put my merino wool layer on, I think. Just layer up so that I don't get cold. I'm not cold at the moment, but it's always best to layer up before you get cold. <laughs> There's wigwam over there. Ooh. Ah. Went for a walk to end of there. Make most of this sunset. Do you want to come with me? Come and ogle this beast. Am I doing too much walking? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a 30 mile day tomorrow and I'm out here doing a bit. Get down here behind this rock. <laughs> I've got me down pants on and that. Sheltering behind this rock. I'm going to watch this look. Ain't got long left has it look. It's almost disappeared. Beautiful. <sighs> Glorious. So I only managed to do 15 miles today because I set off a bit late, I set off at 12. But that's alright. I mean the guidebook says only the first day is only supposed to be 12 miles, so we're ahead of that. I tell you what, man, holding this is it's cold on digits, mate. It's very cold. Anyway, I'm just gonna watch it and that's that. If it blows up and looks as amazing once it's gone behind there, I'll bring you back. But other than that, it's just for my peepers. That's my air pump with that thing on it, look. Gives off a wonderful light. I've watched the sunset. The wind is still howling, but we're sheltered quite nicely behind this wall. Um, I didn't fancy any of my meals. I'm just not hungry, so I just thought, I won't bother and hopefully we've got some good weather tomorrow so we can crunch out some miles. Right, I'm going to hit the hay and hopefully I'll have, I'll have bought the maps for this and I'll have sorted out a map time. So I'll be able to see you over on everyone's favourite time, map time. There we go. I've had to buy all three because one of them didn't cut it because it's all little sections of the same height so... I've had to get all three. Let's get into it. I parked my car in Aysgarth Falls National Trust Car Park. It's £17.50 for a week. So it gives you a bit of leeway. So you can take your time if you want. And off I go. Down here. These are where the falls are. Beautiful waterfalls down here. Off I go. Full of the joys of it all. Through my first of many little gates. Uh, I had no idea what I was in for. Along here, down here, across here, over this pond, and down. Then we hit this stretch, and it's quite a long stretch, this, following the river year down. But it's lovely walking, lovely underfoot. Onto the old railway lines, and along. Through this farm, lots of little bridges and gates. We hit the road for a little bit here and then it's over this, he had like a stone flagged path through the field. Fantastic railings on this bit here, in the middle of nowhere. 
really treating us. Into Askrig where I got my quiche <laughs> and a cake. I had a little look around the church. And now I goofed here. I went down here. Started following this here. But what you should do <laughs> is sort of go through the church again. Little, little gates and along. And then we go through this tiny little gate which must be the smallest gate I've ever been through. Shout out that. Past this disused mill through here. All the sides of these banks were just riddled with wild garlic. The smell was beautiful. And now I took a little detour down here to check out the waterfall then back. Carried on. And then hit a little bit of road but these roads aren't, they're not busy. You didn't see any cars at all. They're just little country lanes. Nice walking actually. Over this little bridge that had just been built, rebuilt and I was the first hiker to go over it so quite happy about that. <laughs> The path seems like it carries on, but you just go across these fields here. There's not much of a path at all. In fact, there's no path. You just go across these fields and along. And it's just along here was pretty relentless with gates, to be honest. <laughs> like, you're looking at like, I don't know, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Total gate fest. Be careful what you wish for. Along here. Keep going. Through said busk, I got a little bit lost here, started going up here, then down there, and I was like, I had to just do some serious map time. But it's like behind a guest house here, like a farmhouse thing. You go through it, it's like you it feels like you're trespassing, but you're not. Through here, and again, all these walls have got little gates in, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Unbelievable, really. We hit this bit here. Get to the top of here, There's some lovely views. This is where that memorial bench was, and we dropped down. Now this is where you, this is where you stop if you're doing it by the guide. But you can stop here. There's a pub, there's a campsite, there's plenty going on down here. Well, I decided to bat on, and this is where we join the Pennine Way. So the tracks are pretty well defined here, and we join the Pennine Way, and we start our elevation up. The wind was really starting to get up coming from this direction, so I was looking over here for somewhere because I wanted to get out of the wind. The views were magnificent as I came up here. Here, this is where I sort of, how was it down here? I think it was down here, I came off the path because this wall, I was trying to get behind this wall so I followed it all the way up until I got to this corner and that's where I pitched my tent. I had views this way of the sunset and that's where we'll start tomorrow, heading off and continuing on the Pennine Way. Right, and that's it, day one done. If you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing and hit the little bell if you want to be notified of the next episode. Woo. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.